Today we're going to show you how to change the evaporator fan motor on your refrigerator and it's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a quarter inch nut driver and a pair of needle nose pliers. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, since we will be working near some electrical circuits, we'll need to disconnect power to the refrigerator. So pull it forward enough so that we can disconnect the plug. The next we're going to open the freezer door completely and remove any items that are on the shelf. And we'll remove any shelving that is in the freezer and set it aside. Now if you have an ice maker in your refrigerator, you'll need to remove it. And next, we'll take the cap off where the fill to the ice maker would be and remove four quarter inch hex head screws that secure the evaporator panel to the back wall. Now once you've removed all of the screws, we can tilt that evaporator cover forward and then lift it out of the opening in the freezer floor. We'll tilt it forward enough so that we can disconnect the wires to the light bulb and then also disconnect the harness to the evaporator fan motor. And that will allow us to remove the evaporator cover and fan motor so we can set it on a suitable work surface to change the motor. Now our first step will be to remove the shield for the light bulb. So just depress the top of it and release the two little locking tabs and just rotate it out of the opening where the two tabs connect on the bottom. Just set that aside. Now we're next pull the light bulb and socket off of that cover as well. Now there are two tabs on the back of that socket that hold it to the evaporator cover. So we're just going to depress the top one and then tilt that socket out of the opening and we'll set the bulb and socket aside. The reason we take this out now is it is easier when reinstalling the evaporator cover to pull the wires through that opening and connect them to the socket than it is to try to leave the socket in and connect the wires to the back of it because you can't really see them. Now our next step will be to remove the evaporator fan cover and it's clipped to the evaporator cover with six little plastic tabs. So we'll turn it upside down. We're going to release the two bottom ones first. So we'll simply push those towards the center and release them. And then we'll move up to the two middle ones. At the same time, we're going to keep a little upward pressure on that evaporator cover. And once we've released those middle ones, we simply just tilt it forward and lift the two bottom locking tabs out of the opening. And we'll set that aside. Uh, next, we're going to remove the ground wire from the motor. Let's pull that tab off. And if it's on there snug, you may need to use the needle nose pliers to pry it off. Then next, we're going to remove the two motor wires. And there is a little locking tab on those motor wires. So if you take your needle nose pliers, locate that tab and just depress it, those wires will slide right off. And the last thing, we'll remove the ground screw from the side of the motor bracket. Now we can turn the assembly up the other way and remove the two screws securing the motor bracket to the evaporator cover. We'll save those screws to install the new motor in place. And then we can lift the evaporator cover off and set that aside. Now next we'll want to remove the fan blade from the old motor. You should be able to pry that off of that shaft and we'll set that aside. Now next we'll just take note of how that motor mounts in there. There is a rubber bushing at the front motor bracket and another one at the back. So we'll remove the two quarter inch screws that secure the top motor bracket. We'll lift that bracket off. And if the bushing stays on the motor, we'll need to pull it off and reinsert it into the bracket. And lift that motor out. And again, make sure that the bushing didn't stay on the motor. We'll set it aside. 
and we'll insert the back side of the motor into that bushing. And then the front and reinstall the screws. Make sure the screws are nice and tight. Oh, now we can install that assembly onto the evaporator cover. So we're just going to lay that motor face up, line up the screw hole in the bracket, and replace the two screws. We need to make sure these screws are nice and tight. Now we'll flip that assembly over and reconnect the wires. So we'll start with the ground wire. So we'll slide that onto the terminal on the motor and then the screw on the side of the motor bracket. Make sure that's nice and tight. And then the motor wires. Make sure that that little locking tab engages and holds it in place. And we can turn it over again. And we'll reinstall the fan blade. Now there was a larger opening in the hub of that and that will go on first. And push it all the way on until it bottoms out and then we can put the cover back on. So we'll start with engaging the two tabs at the top then we'll just tilt it up against the evaporator cover hold it in position and we'll lay that down and then we'll snap the two center tabs into place and then the two bottom ones. Check to make sure the perimeter gasket is firmly in place. And now we're ready to put the whole assembly back into the refrigerator. Now when reinstalling the evaporator cover and fan motor, well first of all I want to make sure that the gasket around the perimeter is snapped into place. And our first step will be to reconnect the harness to the evaporator motor and make sure the locking tabs engage. And next we'll take the gray and white wire for the light bulb. We'll push those through the opening. And then set the air outlet duct down into the opening in the freezer floor. And then tilt the panel back into position until it's flush. Then we'll replace the four screws that secure it. Next we'll reinstall the wires onto the light socket. Now the white wire will go in the center. And make sure the terminal is firmly connected. And then the gray one goes on the outside edge. And again, make sure that it's firmly connected. And tuck the wires up into that opening and engage the two clips on the socket. Snap them into place. Then we'll put the cover back on. So we'll hook the two bottom tabs in first, rotate it up, and snap the two top ones into position. Now if you have an ice maker, you would now reinstall that. And if not, we'll put the cover in for the fill tube where the ice maker would go. And we can replace our shelving. We're ready to reconnect the power and our repair is complete.